Hey everybody, welcome back to your mats. It's Diane here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being here. My channel is about enjoying the skin you're in, living your full self, doing some joyful, mindful movement, maybe some yoga, maybe some hit, just getting in your body and celebrating what your body can do. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and subscribe wherever you subscribe. I'm just pointing randomly in the air, who knows? And then hit the notification bell because I upload a new video every single week. So today's request was stretching our IT bands and opening up our bodies if you do a lot of running. So what most of you might know if you follow me over on the gram. So you should check me out on the gram and on TikTok. Lots of content that I share over there that I don't share here. So if you want some additional content, find me on Instagram, Diane Bondi official, TikTok, Diane Bondi official, Facebook, all those places. And uh, from my uh, Instagram requests, uh, I've requested some stretching for runners. Uh, as I was about to say, I am training to run the Detroit Free Press Marathon, and so it's been uh, challenging. I'm doing a half marathon uh, this week, and then, pardon me, the Detroit Free Press Half Marathon in October. So I'm doing like a, a half and a half. So this week I'm doing a half. And uh, we did a nine mile run yesterday and like an 11 mile run on Sunday. So my legs are a little tight and a little sore. They almost feel like they seize up after I run and everything just gets really tight and sore. So here's a few exercises and stretches and yoga postures that I like to do after my run that I will share with you. You'll need a uh, strap. I always like to have a blanket nearby. I always like to have my blocks nearby. I figure it can't hurt. And we'll start in standing. So what happens when we are running is we're doing a lot of pounding on our joints and a lot of pounding on our body. And so when I come back from running, exercises like running and walking will shorten your uh, hamstrings and make them super tight. So you really want to stretch out your hamstrings. So we're going to take our feet out nice and wide, bend your knees, and then I'm going to invite you to tip your bottom back. So what we're doing is we're hinging at the waist and we're lifting from the gluteal fold, tipping our bottom back, and then folding forward. Right now my hamstrings are pretty open because I didn't run today. Ordinarily, when I do this after a run, my hands don't really touch the floor. But what will help with that is to take a nice wide stance, bend your knees, and tip your bottom back as you fold forward. Then I usually like to bring blocks to the equation if my hands don't quite make it to the floor, and then lean back into my hip, into my heels. Now I'm gonna bring the elbows to the front of my knees, and I'm gently going to push back on my knees, almost as though I'm straightening out my legs, and then bring the crown of the head forward as I straighten out my legs. And I just do this until I feel a stretch in my low back and in my hamstrings. Now, you'll just have to keep straightening out your legs until you find that first sensation, and then I'm going to invite you to stop that first sensation. I don't want you to go further than that. Just want you to be really kind with yourself. Don't push... As I think sometimes people who run are, I'm speaking about myself, of course, always like to push a little bit harder. I find that that's part of the, the psychology of running that I don't really appreciate, but just to do what you can do and just feel the sensation in your body. So give yourself at least 30 seconds here. Try to relax your head if you can, and just notice that when you come from your run and you do this right after your run, you will be so tight in the hamstrings that your body may revolt. So you want to just really take your time when you do this. Taking a nice deep breath in, just allow the crown of the head to once again come forward a little bit. And now what I'm going to invite you to do is just straighten out your legs a little bit and heel toe your feet a little closer together. Stepping back with your right leg, go ahead and take your right knee down to the floor. And now heel toe your left leg to the corner of your mat. Come on to the outer edge of the left leg and keep sliding that right leg back. Now, I've got a pad on my mat that's the same color as my mat, so you probably won't see it. But my back knee is padded and I'm letting my left knee fall out to the left. 
and just allowing myself to get a little bit of a hip opening here. And you can play with how far you want the knee to fall away. So we're getting into the groin on the right side and the groin on the left side in just a slightly different way. So go ahead and take a few moments to breathe here. Try to see if you can be in this pose for at least 30 seconds. You can either curl the back toes under or press the tops of the feet down, whatever you like to do. I find that um, the lower half of my body is perpetually sore from running and not stretching. So I think it's really important. I don't stretch before I run. I just start off as slowly as possible. My run to start is basically a really, <laughs> not even a really fast walk, just a really slow walk. And then this is what I like to do here. So we'll take another few breaths here, just feeling sensation. And then I gradually pick up my, space, my pace. My favorite thing to do is kind of like a negative split so that the second half of your run is a little faster than the first half. But sometimes my pace is all over the place. And now when you're here, go ahead and draw that knee back into the body. And I'm gonna tip my hips back. I'm gonna take my blocks and I'm going to straddle my left foot. Now I'm, I'm nursing a sore knee a little bit here. And now press into the heel here and tip your body out to the side slightly. So I'm just gonna like flip, like just press my hip out to the left a little bit and notice where I feel sensation. I'll move my foot around just to kind of feel where sensation is happening. And then when I'm done there, I'm going to bring both blocks to the inside of my left foot and push off and come back to my tabletop position. Then I'm gonna go over to the opposite side and then I'm gonna step my right foot forward, heel toe it right to the edge of my mat, take my blocks, come onto the outer edge of my right foot and just like kinda sink into my hips here. You can be up on your hands if you like. I did down on my forearms before. Down on your forearms has a little bit more intensity in the stretch and that's just really up to you. Like how, how much stretch do you want? Deeply breathing in through the nose, deeply breathing out through the nose, letting the leg fall out to the side, just being in your body. Breathing deeply and slowly, allowing whatever happens to happen, letting everything just soften into the pose. And like I said, I try to be here, I'm watching like my time, I try to be here for 30 seconds at least. And then pressing down, scooting my hip back toward my heel, straightening out through my front leg best I can, pushing down through the mat of the big toe, gently dragging my heel, and just kind of noticing sensation. Breathing deeply and slowly, just being in it. Ooh. Yep. <laughs> slowly coming out of the pose by walking uh, my hands over to the left side, bending into the knee, and then coming down. Now I'm going to do a pose called frog. Not a fan, I'm just going to be clear, but it's really good for isolating the inside of the hips. So I'm going to bring my blocks out in front, bring my knees out to the right and to the left, and let the inner edges of my legs come down, Ooh. and my feet turn out, think of it like frogs. So I'm on the inside of my knee, and I'm scooting my bottom back. Now, if this is not working for you, so if your knees are very painful here, I'm gonna have you come to seated with the soles of the feet together, this way, okay? And that will be your alternative to frog pose. I'm going to grab a blanket and take it out wide, but pat it so that there's some cushion to it for my knees. So I'm lengthening the blanket and now I'm going to bring just a little extra padding and love. Yeah. 
to my knees, taking my knees out right and left and allowing myself just to settle in here. Like yikes, huh? Breathing deeply and slowly and mindfully. <laughs> All the things. Just allowing yourself the opportunity to stretch. Good. Take one more breath. Pressing into the forearms, sliding the knees in, coming onto your back, bringing your locks over to the side, and coming onto your back. And now we'll do our IT band stretch, reclining. Float your arms out into T. Let both knees windshield wiper over to the right. And then bring your left heel on top of your right thigh. So this is how we're gonna isolate that IT band stretch while we're reclining. And then inhale, come back through center. Let's exhale and do the second side. So now we're gonna windshield wiper over to the opposite side and bring the heel on top of the quad and let everything soften. Lengthen. Breathe. Really getting into that IT band. And now back through center. I'm gonna grab my strap, loop it around my foot. And now lengthen out my left leg. The strap is around my right leg and then letting my leg fall to the left. So the strap is around my right leg my left leg is long and I'm letting it fall to the left. And now I'm gonna stick my butt out a little bit and you're gonna feel that stretch across the IT band. I like to take my gaze toward my right side just because it feels good in my body. If you wanna look straight up at the ceiling, you can do that. And let's come back through center and let's switch it up. So now I'm gonna take my left foot in the band and I'm gonna lengthen out my right foot I'm gonna press out through the heel and then I'm gonna let that left foot fall to the right. And if you find it's hard to come to the floor, you can always bring a strap or a blanket. I'm gonna just scoot over a little bit. You can also bend that bottom leg if it feels a little too intense. You can also shorten the band and bring the leg up a little bit higher. And now really stick the butt out on the left side so you can feel that stretch of the hip and in the legs. And breathe. Beautiful. And now inhale, bring everything back through center. And let's draw our knees into our chest. Take them out wide, open up the back, stretching back and forth, or rolling back and forth, I should say. Beautiful. Maybe taking a happy baby here. Whew. Pressing the knees down toward the floor, opening up in through that low back. And that, bring the soles of the feet together, the knees wide, a little bit more hip opening here. And now rolling over onto the right side, stacking the legs on top of each other, resting our head on our hand, bringing our left heel into the body and bringing the heel to the butt, pressing the hips forward, quad stretch. releasing and 
exploded you in the second side. So be sure to stay here in each of these poses for as long as you like, right? You don't have to come out quickly. You can take your time and enjoy the sensation of stretching out your body. What I like about doing this pose is that it stretches my shoulder and my quad at the same time. a few more breaths here and then when you're done release and let's make our way to seated holding your hands in front of your heart taking an opportunity to get in touch with your breath and to enjoy joyful and mindful movement Thank you so much for joining me today for stretching out, stretching out for runners, getting into our IT bands. And I hope you will consider commenting, letting me know what kinds of stretches you do when you run, what kinds of content you'd like to see here on my channel. And hopefully you'll share, like, and subscribe. All right, have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.